Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on tool and die design. Uh, we are still on module zero and we are reviewing some basic concepts and terminology on which this course will build. So in this specific lecture, we will be discussing tool room drawing. So we will discuss some common uh, practices and guidelines to draw uh, the drawings for tools and dies. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand commonly used practices and guidelines for tool drawings. And towards the end of this lecture, we will briefly review the concept of geometric tolerances. So first of all, general tips and guidelines for tool drawings. Uh, before we start, let me emphasize here that the points uh, that we will be discussing in this lecture are not uh, in a very structured format. We will be just uh, focusing on some uh, practices and some, some guidelines that are relevant to this course. So you might find the ideas to be slightly random, but each slide or each uh, uh, point will be uh, targeted at some specific concept. So you should uh, focus on that. So one of uh, those uh, important points that we re require to consider regarding this course is the concept of partial view uh, in engineering drawing. So if an object is symmetrical, then a partial view will usually serve the purpose. For example, when we are drawing a thread or a gear that is generally symmetric about a certain axis, then a partial view will uh, serve the purpose. We don't need to draw the whole thread or whole gear. So it is easy to draw, saves time, and is clearer to the person reading the print or drawing. So it is very obvious in this figure A that uh, this part is symmetric about a certain axis. And you can easily imagine that it has four holes. This part would have four holes are drilled uh, near the boundary. So instead of drawing the whole part, we have drawn half of it, and the rest of the half will be just a mirror image of what we have drawn. So the rest of the half will be mirror image of this uh, uh, drawing that we have drawn. And same applies to the drawing for, for gears and threads. For example, instead of drawing all teeth, for this gear we have drawn, in this case, uh, just three teeth. And this partial view is very clearly indicating that there will be similar teeth on, on, the, on the gear that we will be making. And same applies to the threads and other symmetrical parts. We will repeatedly need assembly drawings in this course. And an assembly drawing is where all the parts and components are shown at their original position. So this is an asymmetric view of a, of a punching and blanking die. Now it is very hard actually sometimes to understand the position of different parts or to understand how these parts will fit together by just looking at such an assembly drawing. So we need exploded view in order to better understand where different parts will fit. So this is uh, what is shown on the right side is the exploded view of this die set that is shown on the left side. So we can get an idea, a very clear idea that at the top will be the punch holder of the die set, then there will be piercing punch that will be uh, attaching to, to this punch holder then we have actually a punch plate through which this piercing punch will attach to the punch holder and there are there is a pilot then then there is a blanking punch and so on so they all this all uh, assembly as a whole will be fitting to the punch holder uh, so uh, this upper is actually the punch holder just to give you a better idea and at the bottom of this punch holder are the rest of the components, including the punch plate, the punch pilot, etc. 
Then there is a stripper plate. So this one is the stripper plate that is shown separately in the exploded view. Then we have automatic stop. So this is the automatic stop that stops the sheet once it is fed from right to left. And then we have a bag gauge, for example, and finger stop. So uh, the finger stop and this one is the bag gauge. And you can, of course, uh, see the other parts as well, just like this one, the die block. So here is the die block. This one, this one is the die block. Just under the stripper is the, is the die block. And we can easily see the details of die holder. So this at the bottom is the die holder. So for many assembly drawings, in order to better idea of how different parts will fit, where different parts will fit, we will need exploded. As I mentioned, we mostly will need assembly drawing. So this is actually the assembly drawing, the uh, one shown on the uh, previous slide was asymmetric view. So here we, we have uh, three different views of, uh, of a jig. So you can very easily see the top and front and side view. So different details are shown of components or the parts of this jig. For example, uh, this pin should have this size, 1, uh, 0.187 into 0.75. Uh, the distance between uh, these two uh, bushings is shown, distance of this bushing to the edge and so on. You can see other dimensions as well. And this part, this uh, screw is uh, a standard part, so only its part number is shown. And we can refer to the bill of materials or the, or the library of parts to find the uh, detailed dimensions of this, uh, this part, this screw. So this is also one of the guidelines that for standard parts, you don't need to show the detailed dimensions on the assembly drawing. Only mentioning the part number is sufficient. So an assembly drawing shows the entire tool in its completed form with all parts in their proper place. But we do need detailed drawings to show tools with many parts that must be drawn separately to show true sizes and shapes. So it is used when a tooling is too complex for an assembly drawing. So here, for example, the details of different components uh, of a certain uh, tooling are shown. So for example, what would be the diameter of the screw? What should be the feature on the head? It should be knurled. What is the specs uh, of this thread? So it should be uh, this specific thread. We can refer to the library for the details of what does it mean? And of course, different lengths of the thread and uh, different lengths of the screw. And you can see similar details for uh, this screw shown on the right side as well and for the top part of this uh, tooling as well. So you can see different dimensions and angles and types of threads, everything is shown in detail. Another thing that you might notice here is that uh, you can use words. Words can be used on drawings to better describe a certain feature. So for example, this slot should be 0.50 uh, for example, this is a size, let's suppose it is uh, uh, in inches, so it should be 0 0.50 inch uh, wide and it should be 0.93 inches deep for screwdriver. So the purpose of this slot and dimensions of this slot are described in words. And sometimes we can use a combination of assembly drawing and detailed drawing. So this is the assembly drawing for, for this uh, uh, assembly that comprises uh, three major components and we have used these uh, uh, numbered balloons to show, uh, to indicate actually different parts of this assembly. So uh, one is the bushing. So here we have shown the details of this bushing and two is the jig plate. So here we have shown the details of jig plate and Three is this locator block. So we have shown the details of the locator block. So the assembly drawing and detailed drawing can be used together, that is on the same sheet actually, to show both the uh, position of different components in the assembly where the different 
components will fit as well as detailed dimensions of each of the components. So we may use this practice for drawing the sheet metal dies. So we may use an assembly drawing and uh, we may uh, supplement it with, with the detailed drawing. So as I mentioned, another important guideline for tool drawings is to, using, uh, to use words on drawings where, where possible. So this is an example that we just saw in one of the previous slides as well. So at the top you can notice that we have used words to describe the size of this uh, slot as well as its purpose. Here we have described uh, this hole in words, so it, it should be 0 0.6242 point six two five zero so lower limit of size and upper limit of size and its, pur its purpose is for press fit on bushing so some bushing will be uh, inserted into this hole so again words are being used to describe features of this hole same about this hole so we have to drill it to three over 64 inches and then we have to ream it to suit 0 0.5001 bushing and then we will be installing bushing and this is the size of the bushing. And this hole is to be made at four corners of this part. Of course, in, in this drawing, only one hole is shown, but on rest of the three sort of corners, uh, the same hole will be made. And these are the details of this hole. Drilling to this size, then reaming, and the bushing will insert, and the size and the specs of the bushing are also mentioned. So don't think that, a good drawing is the one that only has dimensions and tolerances, but do, do use words where possible. So I have explained this uh, uh, drawing in words, you can read them. Another important guideline is to reduce the number of views. Standard drafting practices usually require three views of an object that is common, but if one or two views totally describe the object, the third view should be eliminated. But remember that when reducing the number of views, make sure that none of the necessary information is omitted. So this is a very simple example. So we have shown different dimensions of this part. Instead of showing the thickness of this part in one or even two more views, we have just mentioned 0.63 thick. So thickness is 0.63 inches throughout. Here is another example of a sheet metal part. So we have mentioned different dimensions of this part. And instead of showing the thickness in another view, we have mentioned that it will be 8 mm thick throughout. So we will see later that we do need two or three views. And in some cases, we draw four views as well. So that will be explained in one of the following slides. Another important guideline is uh, to use symbols where appropriate. So for example, on this drawing, we have used two welding symbols. There are many symbols related to welding that you can find from the machinery's handbook or some other books where welding is discussed, especially the design of welds is discussed. And these are two very commonly used symbols for machining. So this symbol shows on any drawing that it requires a material removal and this symbol shows that this surface does not require material removal and there are other symbols related to machining as well and there are symbols related to surface finish as well that you will find on uh, many drawings for, for example if this surface is to be ground or if it is to be lapped or whatever so these details are shown with the help of symbols Another very important guideline is regarding describing standard parts. So standard parts such as uh, nuts, bolts, screws, pins, washers, drill bushings, die sets, clamps, etc., should be described by their name, part number, or size, rather than by drawing the entire detail. We saw this uh, example already that this bushing is described by its size. 
So that is edge point three seven five zero five over eight three over eight. So we will discuss what each of these numbers is showing, and its part number is five zero one. So we could even simply mention uh, we could simply mention this part number only. Even we could omit these details as well, the specs of this question. So part number five zero one would be sufficient. So from the the bill of materials or the part library, we can see the detailed dimensions for this bushing. And you might have also noticed that uh, this bushing and this bushing have to be of the same size. So we haven't mentioned anything on this bushing because we have written this two each. So both of these bushings will have this size. So we have eliminated a lot of details on this drawing by, by just describing this part number. And same is true for the screw. So we have mentioned the part number, this one, and we can refer to the bill of materials and uh, or uh, the part library. And we only need one screw per assembly in this case. Here is another example. So part number this, this, uh, this is the part number for, for this dowel pin that has a size of 0.187 into one, but further detail can be seen from the, from the bill of material. And same is true about this, this screw. So its part number is this one. Two more points. First is avoid repeating dimensions in different views. So if one dimension is Mentioned in one view, do not repeat it in the second view. And also show the critical size dimensions on the drawing and the manufacturer or tool maker should not be required to make calculations regarding critical size dimensions. You can find some examples from the book by Hoffman on critical size dimensions. So these are some random but very important and relevant guidelines for tool drawings. In the next segment, we will discuss some specific examples of tool drawings. Thank you very much.